Okay, now that we have our user model, we can actually create some tests for it. So I'm going to do a test first kind of approach here. This isn't true TDD because we're not really building a lot of features here, but uh, more just to show you how it can work. And you can see when I created the model, because I had RSpec installed, now it created this user spec for us automatically. Now it just put some pending code in here, so this is pointless, but it at least does a little something for us. So uh, I'm gonna get rid of this, and now I'm gonna start creating a few, uh, a few things that we can use. So the first thing that I do, uh, if I'm just using plain RSpec and I'm not using something like Factory Girl, uh, which we will get into uh, in the RSpec course, um, but uh, if I'm just doing it by itself, I do a before block. So I do before each, and this does exactly what you would think it does uh, before each one of the tests it's going to run whatever is in here and so uh, what I want it to run is a user creation method so I'm just going to do user dot create and uh, set it e inside of an instance variable and I just want to pass in the different values uh, for the test so uh, if we open up our schema which you can go to DB uh, schema and see that we have all these items right here. One thing when I'm developing, and this is completely just a style thing, uh, a lot of times I'll just copy some of my schema elements right inside and I found that it's nice having those right in front of you. There are some gems that actually do that and put them in your model files. Uh, I find that pretty handy. Um, but for right now, I'll just put them here just so we can see this. So I'm going to say user create, give it a name, say test name, and then an email and say email at yahoo.com and password. ASDF, ASDF. Okay, so those are all the attributes that we need. And so if we write our first test, and I'm gonna put this inside of another describe block. So you can see we have a describe block right here and we're putting a nested describe block. And so I wanna describe creation. So I want to put in here the different uh, values uh, that are associated or tests that are associated with the create method. So I'm going to say it should have one item created after being created. Pretty straightforward, nothing magical there. And so to test this, uh, RSpec comes with some nice uh, helper methods. So I'm going to say expect so we want whatever is in here we expect this to equal something so I'm going to do a query on user so I'm gonna say user all count so it's gonna look for all of the users inside the test database which right now is none but our hope is that after we've created one that there should be exactly one so I'm gonna expect user all count to equal one and so this uh, this is our first test so let me open up the console or not the console here but the terminal here and do bundle exec rspec and see if that test is passing or if I have any syntax errors or anything like this this is always one of the very first tests that I create it's one of the most basic ones and that all worked there was one example zero failures Okay, awesome, so that's good. Now, the one that I usually do for the model test right after this is, uh, and I'm going to put it in its own describe block, and I'll show you uh, afterwards uh, what, uh, what this essentially allows us to do. It lets us organize our tests. So I'm gonna say describe uh, validations and set this inside of a block and so what I want to do now is I'm gonna actually create some tests that are gonna fail because if you look inside of our user model you can see we don't have any validations in place right here we just have the user so we could essentially create a user without a name an email or a password which seems pretty pointless we wouldn't want that in a real application so that's why we set up validations to protect against that so we will say it should not let a user be created 
without an email address. And put this inside of a do block. And now we're gonna set up another expectation. So I'm gonna say expect, and, uh, and actually, sorry, <laughs> I got a little bit out of myself. Uh, for user, I also need to uh, set the user um, name or email, because that's what we're testing first, to nil. So this is the equivalent of saying, okay, we created this user and then we set it to nil. So we're gonna check to see if this is valid or not. So after setting this to nil, I'm gonna say you, uh, instance variable user, expect this to not be valid and uh, don't worry if this doesn't seem, it should be pretty easy to understand what it wants to do. These are methods that are built into our spec. So two is just gonna be, or two nots the opposite of two. So uh, you can just put underscore not and that's going to be the opposite. So it's expecting exactly what it sounds like. We're expecting this user inside of this test to not be valid because it set up, uh, set the email address to nil. So if we run this test, we'll see what we have passing and what we have failing. There we go, we have one failure and it even tells us in detail what it is and we also have a breakdown. We have one green dot which means that one test passed and then we have an F here in red and, and this means it failed. So uh, this is actually good because uh, what we tested is uh, is not working and it shouldn't be. So it says right here, user validations should not let a user be created without an email address, but it did because it actually let this one through. The process that we're doing right here is a process in test-driven development called uh, red-green refactor. And it actually is based off of having these type of colors. Red means we want to actually have a failure first. We want to try to get the application to fail, then or the test to fail. Then after that, we fix it, and then we do a refactor if a refactor is necessary. So let's get this test passing now. So the, uh, the easiest way to get this passing is I'm just gonna come here and say validates presence of email and let's run the test again. There we go, now our test is passing. You can see we have two green dots, and so that's passing the way we would want it to. Uh, we don't really have anything to refactor right here because this is a pretty basic test. Um, so let's uh, let's do another one, because we just, just to practice and get in the habit of doing it. So I'm gonna say it should not let a user be created without a password. Okay, and you should know exactly what to do here. It's just user password, set this equal to nil, and then expect that this user is not gonna be valid. Okay, and for this one, we're gonna do the exact same thing, run the test, see it fail, and then you should get in the habit of uh, of doing this pretty much for all your validations. So uh, come back here, and uh, if I create a validates presence of for the password, come back, check it, see if the test is passing. Now we have three examples, zero failures, so everything's working. Now something we can actually refactor here is instead of putting this on one line or on two lines, let's just put it on one. So this is our very small refactor. Come back, test it, and see if the tests are still passing. And they are. So that's exactly what TDD is in a very uh, simplified form. So we've created users, we've set some validations, and now uh, we're actually able to let our tests drive the type of code we want to write. So in the last video on this RSpec intro, uh, we're going to put into place some connectors between the model of user and the model of posts and the rest of our application.